Hello everyone and welcome back to another exciting app review by George. And today we're going to talk about the spider code Persian tool. Um, if you've seen any of my previous reviews, I would like to skip this first page because I'm going to put all the details of this review into the uh, video description. So you don't have to worry about watching that part. And overall, I think the knife has very good ergonomics. Um, so in your hand, it's, it's very good ergonomics and the build quality is quite high. Um, so the details, the blade, um, this knife has a, a VG10 stainless steel. A VG10 has been around for a couple of, uh, a couple of decades, I believe. And uh, it's proven steel and uh, used in high-end uh, high uh, Japanese-made kitchen knives. And they have a good balance between the edge retention and the uh, stain resistance as well as toughness. So that's all very, very, uh, very nice. And the, uh, the thumb hole here can be improvised as an Emerson knife, Emerson wave opening system. If you, uh, if you go, on, go on internet or something, you'll, you'll find some pictures where people um, tie a cable tie or zip tie around this region and it uh, becomes a little bump. So when you carry this knife in the pocket, draw the knife and this bump catches on your pocket and uh, it's gonna open the knife instantly by itself. So that's the advantage of having a spider hole, a thumb hole. And obviously the thumb hole allows you to open the knife uh, from both, both left and right hands. Uh, the knife has a very big belly here. See this big, big curve. Uh, the reason it's called Persian is because of this big curve. So uh, when you sharpen this knife on a bench stone or anything, um, you can say this is a flat bench stone and you sharpen the knife like this. Uh, this, cur this curved belly allows you to touch every single point of this edge on the bench stone very easily. Um, of course, the curved belly cuts very well as well. And uh, we've got a finger toil and a thumb ramp on the blade for fine cutting, so you can hold it this way and they cut small things or sharpen the pencil. They give you the option. Um, although I have to admit that having the thumb here and, and the finger there, it doesn't feel particularly nice, unlike many of spiderco some uh, spiderco knives with the finger guard. I think it will be nice if they, if say they chop up this part of the steel, and just look like this. Anyways, we're moving on to the next one. It's um, obviously it's a very very aggressive uh, tip, and um, and this thing will pierce through just about any soft material. Um, and also it's got a full flat grind for, for cutting and slicing, slicing use. We do a quick demonstration. Uh, it was sharpened to a very, 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 very fine sharpness, as you can see. And um, the handle. And because it's a lock back design, uh, it's very proven working mechanism, uh, it, needless to say, it's very strong. And uh, they've got that uh, David Boy dent on the, on the back here to prevent you from accidentally disengaging the lock when you're holding it, because um, it would be very hard to touch the lock enough to actually accidentally disengage the knife. There is a full stainless steel liner inside as you can see, it's hollowed out and um, it's got big, big holes cut into it. Um, there, there you see. And that reduces a lot of weight and uh, it's got good strength as well. And obviously it's a very, very, very contoured uh, handle. Um, when you hold it in your hand, it's, it's providing a very, very good grip and also a finger guard here as well. So you use it in a sort of a self-defense use. The G10 here is, uh, it's got good traction on it. And it's, it's not like a, a super grippy traction like you get from Emerson knives 
or your code still uh, it's just sort of like a sort of fine but still uh, sort of uh, grippy traction and uh, yeah it's finer than the paramilitary tool as well there's a line art hole on the back it's uh, it's actually not a not bad line art hole because uh, some sometimes spiderco does like a very small line art hole this thing is decent size but not like not like the super big ones on the paramilitary tool or the Manix tool. Um, this one is sort of like a medium size in terms of spiderco standard. And um, in the in the pivot, there's a hex screw here. It should be reasonably easy to find the screwdriver for it to disassemble it. Uh, well, take a, take off the, the blade anyways. Uh, the negative points, the tip here is obviously one of its, it's basically its Achilles heel. It's going to be sort of a weaker point. As you can see, it's so fine and so, it tapers down to such a thin point. And there is no fin uh, finger toil jimping or all on the thumb ramp. So it does give you the contour, but there's no jimping. And uh, finger, finger flick deployment was just, actually today, <laughs> Funny enough, I'm trying to do the review, but it, de it deploys reasonably fast somewhat. But as you can see, uh, it's a very, very heavy blade. And the way, um, the position of the thumb hole here, it somewhat dictates that the knife don't actually flick all that well, unless you have like very, very, lot of, lot of practice. Um, for some reason, I'm actually doing quite well today. Anyways, uh, the handles, now, the handle here, as you can see, this is pin construction, pin, pin, and that's pocket clip, it just got, a, got screws, um, and that's the screw as well. So other parts, it's just pin. So you can't take out the knife entirely apart if you have to, uh, if you wanted to. And uh, it's not flow through design due to the fact it's, uh, it's backlog. And the pocket clip here, They've made like a curved pocket clip, which I don't think they had to, but they did it anyways. But that causing, uh, that actually means they couldn't actually figure out a good way to put it on the side uh, because it's, the pocket clip is just not symmetrical. So if you're left-handed, maybe that's a bit of a problem. A few positive things I, I noticed about the knife is that um, the big belly here, I previously mentioned, I should sharpen fairly easily on a bench stone. Uh, that's uh, like a flat bench stone. Just go through like, like this. And um, if you have to, you can use the back of this handle as an impact tool due to the fact that it's just all stainless steel liners and the, the back spacer um, is pretty solid. So it will work very well in terms of using it as a back bashing attack at all and um obviously uh, it's a very 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 aggressive looking knife if you have to use it to um, scare away some bad guys this thing sh should do fairly well and uh, there is a stainless steel backspacer right here holding the the spring for your for your backlog uh, in another video, I've explained how this works. Basically, from the internet sources, I've noticed some, some of the users of uh, Spyderco Enduro had experienced lock failure due to using the knife, sort of a push it too hard. And um, the locking bar here, sort of push the spring here so, so, so much downwards that it breaks the plastic here, which is holding that spring. Uh, I don't see how that would happen to this knife because this knife, instead of a plastic uh, holder, it has a stainless steel holder of that spring. So that what that means is if you put, if you cut this cut stuff with this knife so hard, like against the wood or something, the pressure exerted onto the spring here will be all sort of um, built by a stainless steel backspacer. So that stainless steel would be very very hard to break. A uh, couple of negative things on this knife, based on my speculation. Um, around this region where I'm holding my, my index finger, it's kind of quite narrow. So when you hold it like this, 
I feel like it could probably use slightly little more meat or ma more material to sort of improve, improve the grip. I think that could be something that they, um, they improve, but it's not a big deal. Like a lot of these things I'm just sort of pointing out is the things that people may or may not find sort of uh, good or bad. And next thing is due to this, the size of this knife as well as the aggressive sort of a blade, a blade style, uh, you, put this, you put this thing out in public, it will scare people away. Um, and it's not, very he it's not a very light knife given the size due to the stainless steel construction backspacer and the, um, obviously the back lock. The other thing is um, there's a protrusion from both sides in, in the, uh, by the screws, so that's something maybe it could annoy you because, for example, this side, I can feel my finger if I rub against the, um, the screw, it, it can feel the texture of that cut out there. Uh, I think I did not mention this in the description. Um, if you do run your fingers through here, you can feel the sharp edge of the stainless steel liners. Um, I think, I don't know if they did a deburring or anything, but the, the burr was sort of slightly still present when the customer uh, receives it. So I think it's something that they can probably improve just to uh, improve the overall feel of this knife. Not a too big a deal. I think I've already sort of cleaned out some of the burr with my finger fingertip and uh, nail, but I can still feel it's there. So anyways, that concludes the review of this knife. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, help you make a better decision. I'll see you next time. Thank you.